Did you know that Marvel Comics once had a hilarious and irreverent series that parodied superhero characters? Pitched to Stan Lee by Roy Thomas and Gary Friedrich, it was called Not Brand Eck, and it ran in the late 1960s. Welcome to Comic Book Storytime. All right, well... I want to talk about my love for this just unsung and unheard of, even by a lot of Marvel fans, uh, this book called Not Brand Eck. It was started in 1967 was the first issue. When that came out, I was probably in fifth grade, I want to say. And some of the kids in the room, the comic book kids were reading this book. And it had like under the desk, which was the way you had to read comics back then, you know, so... I was like, what are you reading? And this, this, this book, like, this is this thing, man. This Marvel's like, you know, making fun of all the superheroes and stuff. Like, what? Like, you know, let me see this. So at that time, you know, 12 cents was kind of hard to come by for me. You know, it was hard to, to understand, but uh, it didn't get out much, as, uh, as some of you might know. So I had not heard of this book. And my buddy, I think his name was Harold, or something like that. And he was like a, a, a comic book fan. But he was also, he liked baseball and stuff like that, too. So he was like a, a regular kid, but he, he dabbled in comic books. But he always had the latest comics. And I would always, like, borrow his comics. He let me borrow them. Yeah, sure, go ahead and take it. You know, no big deal. We sat next to each other in the back of the class, and we read comic books and drew all day long. That's where we came up with stuff like Buzzsaw Boy and The Awesome Five and stuff like that. So he let me borrow this book, Not Brand Eck Number 2. This is one of them from probably that same year. And then you see it has a Spidey Man and Nat Man and Rotten. And it spoofs all the Marvel superheroes as well as the DC superheroes. Uh, they really wanted to do just the DC superheroes at first. But Stan was like, no, we got to do ours too. Because that's what we were promoting our book. And I'm glad he did. That, that made more sense. And what does it come from? What's, what's this name? It's not Brand Eck, you might ask. In the old days, they never named the opposition's brand when, in advertising. They were, I was, our brand is better than Brand X. What kind of canned ham do you have? I recommend the Wilson certified canned ham. It's the only tender made ham. Do you have Brand X? Yeah, but you don't want that. Give me Brand X. Okay. Ouch! I told you to take the Wilson certified. You never get burned. So Marvel took it to another level and thought like, okay, let's just call it DC Brand Eck. So not Brand Eck meant that we're not a crappy product and we're, we're better. And everybody was in on the joke. I never actually saw the first issue until, God, my, almost my adult life because <laughs> there was there was no back issue stores uh, at that time that i knew of and uh if you didn't come out on the newsstand you didn't catch it then you, it was just gone unless you had a friend who had a copy uh so i had to like backtrack all those other issues later on into my adulthood but in the between time before that i should say i just was obsessed with this book because it was just the funniest thing i i love mad magazine mad was just a thing that every kid read I mean, not nowadays now because they got a million other things they can read and, and do. But Mad Magazine was just the shit because, you know, it, it made fun of movies and TV, and, uh, but not really uh, a lot of comic book characters. But maybe that's where Stan saw this opening. He can make this book that can promote his books and also kind of take a, a lighthearted look at them. And I remember the one that really jumped out at me, the one that just blew my mind, was by issue number nine. It jumped up to be a 25 cent giant size 64 page book. You know, I love it. That's why I love these square bound 65 page books, or whatever, however many numbers they have in them. They are just an entire Saturday afternoon of stuff for a kid to read. I think Harold got this book like, like one week and I just begged him, you got to let me borrow this book. And I couldn't find it anywhere in the news thing I was going to. It was, I guess, probably a low distribution, I would, I would, I would think. Because even now, uh, a lot of people don't know about it. And there are not a lot of copies out there. And they're, they're still moderately priced. But for a Silver Age book like this, it should probably be a lot more. And there was nothing else like it either because I think... What was it? DC had this thing called the Inferior Five, which was like the superhero group that was a bunch of goofy characters, but they didn't 
parody any of the other superheroes of, of DC. In fact, now with, with the names like Dumb Bunny in the group, they probably couldn't even adapt that to today's comics. Uh, so who knows if that will ever be a thing. But Brand Eck has parodied its stuff perfectly. And the one that got me the most in issue number nine, which was one of my, my favorite issue of it when it jumped to, to king size, was it did a parody of Hales to Astonish number 100. And this was drawn by Marie Severin. And Marie Severin is also a highly underrated artist uh, in the Marvel genre, in, 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 in Marvel period. Marie Severin was a workhorse. She did a lot of work. She was good. She had a brother named John Severin, who also uh, was in the bullpen. Uh, he did some good stuff, too. Uh, but this takeoff she did of A Tales to Astonish number 100, which was called Let There Be Battle between the Submariner and the Hulk. And it's just this long, epic like battle between the Hulk and the Submariner for the entire book. And they're just like tearing up Miami Beach. And it's just one of the funniest things. And she drew both of those. She drew Tales to Astonish 100 and she drew a not brand X that story where they talk about uh, that battle. And that's a bet there'll be battle. They just, just changed the name of it and, and, and spoofed it. You can see how her style changed from the not brand X number nine to the Tales to Astonish number 100. She drew both of those comics, but she drew the, the, the not brand X parody in her more, I wouldn't say goofy style, but it's more of a, a loose comical style. And I thought that was just the coolest thing. I read the the first book, at least of uh, the Tales to Astonish 100, and I loved it. And when it, when I read number nine, I was like, oh my god, I just I'm just so in love. I thought this just that was just the funniest shit. That was just the funniest thing that they spoofed this this book that I love, and I love them both. So th that was it. That that was just done right there. Unfortunately, not brand that would come to an end with issue number thirteen when they started doing some reprints. And it was kind of tapering off. And I think the boosting up number nine to a full-size comic was kind of like a last-ditch effort to keep it alive. I, outside of some kids like like me and Harold, there wasn't a lot of people who were loving this. Maybe they thought that either it was just stupid or it was disrespectful to the real characters to, to be making fun of them. They had names for, like, you know, the Superman, uh, the DC characters, like Superman. And, and they, they changed a lot of different names of, of their characters, too. So... I just thought it was a, a good parody. After Not Brand X ceased publication, there was, I think, um, something called Crazy that came out that did some reprints. And uh, there was a, one called Spoof, which had a, a Mod Squad and um, also a Dark Shadows spoof uh, in their first issue. I think I have that, I have that first issue too. But nothing ever came close to the level of... Uh, dedication that they gave to not brand Eck to to spoofing all the marvel characters and all the dc characters there weren't there were no others at the time so you, you spoofed the hell out of those and uh, the kids that i knew just just loved this book and i think dc had another thing called plop which i remember seeing it i know it was kind of a goofy book but i don't think it was anything like not brand Eck. it was just probably an attempt to just capitalize on the the brief popularity that brand Eck had at the time but the whole Marie Severin thing, I guess, brings it back home to inspirational kind of a thing, in addition to the humor that she had. And uh, and she did a lot of stories in these books. Uh, and she was kind of like a, a B team. I hate to say it that way, but uh, she wasn't a, a highly regarded artist. But you look at her body of work and you look up her work online, you can see that she was really a, a great comic artist. Uh, she lived until uh, early 2000s, so she, she worked for a pretty long time in the industry as well. Seeing how Marie just did her job and plugged along and, and uh, just carried Not Brand Eck pretty much through his entire run, uh, there were some other artists like you know uh, Bill Everett uh, made an appearance. Even Wally Wood was in a few of those issues, but I don't think that they, they were kind of like, even Jack Kirby had a, a, an issue number one. But Marie did all the heavy lifting in that book. And I just feel like she's a person I remember because of that, because a lot of people don't remember her name. I honestly you know, didn't follow her work throughout my life, to be honest. But I never forgot her. I never forgot the influence that she had on me as a kid 
uh, drawing those books and on that uh, Tales to Astonish number 100 and the Brand X number nine, both of who are very different books drawn by the same person. And uh, it inspired me to include a sense of humor in my books. I always try to have some kind of a humorous angle to all my writing. I think even in in tragedy, there, there's some way to work in some kind of levity, I would say, you know, it's just, just, just to even it out a little bit, if that makes any sense. So, uh, yeah, shout out to Marie Severn, who uh, influenced uh, young Lorenzo. And I didn't even know it at the time, but uh, I realized that uh, to this day that and I, I was inspired and I am inspired by Marie Severn and her, and her work. And uh, Not Brand X was a, was a big part of that. And I try to pick up Not Brand X wherever I can. They're still pretty affordable. It's starting to go up in price now, but not even compared to anything else that's Silver Age. If you're interested in reading something that's well-drawn and kind of funny from the 60s, check out Not Brand X. And there was even a number 14 that was released many years ago. I was able to pick up that one in 25 of, of number 14, but it just wasn't the same. It, it just, you know, the humor from then wasn't there. You know, you got Four Bush Man, which is like the, the imaginary hero they have, uh, not Brand X. He's like dabbing on the front cover and everything. You know, it's a David Nakayama cover, whose art I love. Uh, just not the same as the old uh, 1 through 13 issues that I grew to love back in back in fifth grade. I love not Brand X. I always will. And um, and if nobody else buys those books, I'll keep buying them wherever I see them and there'll be more for me. So <laughs> you can join the fun, folks, or... Or you can let me have all the fun. Uh, either way, it's all good. Thank you for watching this episode of Comic Book Storytime. We hope you've enjoyed it. Check out self-published comic book writer and artist Lorenzo Ross over at the Alternative City Shop. Here you can purchase his comics as well as other comic book related goodies. You can also find him on YouTube over at Indie Comics and Reviews for more great comic book content.